Folding big hands isn't necessarily the most exciting part of poker, but the ability to make the right folds at the right times can contribute significantly to your win rate. But how do we go about figuring out the best times to make a hero fold? In this video, we're going to break down the topic and give you a blueprint. Let's dive in. Hi Wizards, I'm Matt Hunt and today we're going to discuss the prospect of hero folding as a follow-up to my last video here on the channel where we talked about hero calling. If you haven't yet checked out that video, I'd recommend going back to it before you watch this one, but for anyone who hasn't seen it, we'll do a quick review of the theoretical principles behind bluff catching and how they might apply to this topic. But first, we'll establish our definition for what hero folding really is. We're only going to be looking at river spots since those are the spots where hero folds are most feasible and because we're quite often dealing with bluff catching scenarios where many hands have approximately zero EV as bluff catchers. These hands are going to mix calls and folds at equilibrium, but even if we fold with one of these hands in pure, we're not deviating that much. But for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to focus on the times where we decide to fold with a hand which would ordinarily be a pure call at equilibrium. So in other words, we're really not giving our opponent credit for being able to find enough bluffs. To recap the theory behind these spots, we're supposed to call any river bet in a bluff catching spot a certain percentage of the time in order to ensure that villains bluffs break even, or at least that the EV of bluffing is the same as the EV of checking and giving up. As usual, we're focused on keeping our opponent indifferent between options as much as possible. They're supposed to be bluffing at a certain frequency in order to ensure that we can't hero fold with any of our best bluff catchers. If they never bluffed, we would only call with hands which beat enough of their value bets because we only need to call with a given hand if it's going to have enough equity at showdown to win a certain percentage of the time. In practice, many scenarios will play out differently from what theory suggests, obviously. And this is particularly true in live poker, where behavioral reads and game dynamics can significantly influence overall bluffing frequencies. Some players will end up under bluffing for one reason or another in a given spot, which makes bluff catching on our part a very negative EV proposition. If we choose not to bluff catch, we're ignoring the principles of minimum defense frequency and choosing to fold too much, and we're doing it in a very binary way. We're folding all of our bluff catches if we think we're no longer getting the right price. Hypothetically, villain could exploit this in future by always bluffing and never value betting thinly. But obviously, if we're considering hero folding, we're probably doing it against an opponent who we don't believe is capable of adjusting appropriately in future hands. Just like with hero calling, there are two primary types of spots in which we'll find ourselves with potential opportunities to hero fold. The first is when the board texture runs out in such a way where it interacts with almost all the hands in villain's range in some way, leaving them with very few obvious bluffing candidates. This will force them to aggressively search for available bluffs, and potentially turn certain hands which do possess some showdown value into bluffs, which is generally a lot more difficult to pull the trigger on than simply checking and hoping to have the best hand. The second category is where villain does have a good number of identifiable bluffing candidates, but simply decides not to bluff with them on the river, either because they just can't bring themselves to pull the trigger, or because they don't expect us to fold often enough. This can sometimes occur on unique river runouts where the river card interacts with almost all hands in our own range, or it can simply occur because of game dynamics, such as if this particular player has been bluffing a lot against us recently and they've decided they don't think we're going to keep folding. So now that we've established the parameters of these spots, let's open GTO Wizard and use GTO Wizard AI to explore a couple of examples. So this is the example spot we're going to be looking at for this particular case. We've got a 100 big blind MTT scenario with hijack versus big blind formation. And we've got a 10, 9, 5, 2 diamonds flop with the in position player in the hijack betting two thirds of pot, the big blind calling, the turn is the eight of spades. The hijack is going to go ahead and bet full pot, get called, and then the river is going to come the jack of diamonds, which obviously puts not only three to a flush out there, but also four to a straight as well. So very tricky run out. Big Blind is going to check their whole range. There was some leading here in the original version of this sim, but I eliminated the lead here just because I wanted to make sure that we were looking at this as a pure bluff catching spot. And if we look at villain's strategy here, they're basically only really able to value bet with the flush and the straight flush at this point, and a tiny bit of some straights. It's going to be a straight with a diamond is going to bet at some rate there, like pocket queens with a diamond. That is the only region they're able to really value bet, but they are able to, of course, find some bluffs. And their main bluffs here are going to be coming from the low pair and the king high region, not really the ace high region. You can see if we highlight trash hands here, the Pocket fours and below are by far the most frequent bluffs, just those pure unblockers here. 
We've got a little bit of ace eight off. We've got a little bit of king six suited, but really not a lot going on there in the way of bluffing candidates with the ace highs and things like that. Those hands just either already have a pair that they just rivered or they just are not going to be doing very well in terms of blocking power. And if we shift to looking at the big blinds response here, you can see that they're bluff catching a fair amount about 40% of the time. And then they're also jamming 10% of the time looks like with mostly their flushes, but not all their flushes, just their strongest ones. And you can see that the straights are actually partially folding here. If we highlight this straight category, the stuff that has just the seven, that stuff is folding. So that's pretty close, but it is more or less going to be more in the fold category. We've also got a lot of other categories that are breaking even. Everything from third pair upwards is actually mixing at least some calls. And this is all just because of card removal. We've got a lot of different hands like king nine here. King nine of spades is pure call simply because it blocks king queen. It unblocks certain other bluff candidates. It unblocks all the low cards. But then we've got a lot of other stuff like, for example, the ace jack. Ace jack of spades is pure fold. So card removal is going to have a really big impact here. And you can see that the bluff catching protocols for the big blind are not particularly clear. Now, if you look at our alternative sim, what I've done here is I've actually locked villains turn betting range. So I've had them betting a very draw heavy turn range. You can see that their draws are all betting at a pretty high rate here. Flush draws, open enders. The stuff that has a pair is mostly checking, but then you can see a lot of the diamonds, spades, a lot of the 6x, a lot of the jack x, 7x, queen x, all of these gut shots, these drawing type hands, those are going to be betting the turn at a pretty high rate in this version of the sim. And I think that's actually not too dissimilar from how a lot of players actually play. So when they bet this turn with a very draw heavy range, and then we call, and then we get this jack of diamonds river, it's a river card that now forces them to pretty aggressively try to find the bluffs. And part of the issue here is that even though Villain was not supposed to value bet their straights previously, it's actually fairly likely that they might do that. They might find even more value bets than what they're theoretically supposed to because they are just going to have a higher ratio of hands that are looking to complete that draw. And when they get there, they may not want to check. So let's say that they do actually bet all of their straights and better on the river, even though the straights were actually checking back a lot previously. And then let's say they bluff with all their ace highs and king highs, but they're not bluffing with pairs. They're not bluffing with top pair. They're not arriving here with the low pocket pair region, which is quite important here. So they're not really going to have too many candidates to choose from here, even if they bluff their ace and king high every single time. And if that's the case, look at what the big blinds response is. We're obviously raising with flushes and straight flushes because now villains value bet range includes all those straights, but our straights with the queen are just calling and then everything else, those straights with the seven, those sets, those two pairs, those top pairs, all that stuff that was previously mixing calls is purely folding now. With the exception of some of it, that chooses to turn into a bluff. So some of the specific combos here that block maybe some of the bottom two pairs that block the straight combos, those are choosing to turn into bluffs here for a fairly cheap price, actually, for a fairly small raise. But generally speaking, there's almost no bluff catching actually going on here. There's very, very few hands. If we hit call, it's really only the queen X. And even some of that is not appearing in the range very frequently. So it's queen 10, queen five suited. That's about it. So that's a very good example of where we're making some pretty big hero folds. We're actually folding the seven quite often. And we're really not calling with any of those bluff catchers at all. So to summarize our type one spot here where Villain does not have enough bluff candidates. In this case, we saw that on this board texture, Villain was really only barreling the turn with a lot of value hands and strong high equity draws, which were mostly completed on the Jack of Diamonds River. So that left them with very, very few good bluffing candidates when we checked to them. In this case, their river betting range consisted of around 50 combos overall, with their value range being any straight flush or straight flush. Whereas their bluffs, however, are only seven combos of missed spade draws, specifically the ones which don't have a pair. And that equates to only a 14% bluffing frequency here, which given that we're getting two to one odds and we need 33% equity to call, isn't anywhere close to allowing us to profitably bluff catch. 
In fact, even the low end of the straight with a hand like 10-7 isn't enough for us to call because we still lose to all the value and we still don't beat enough bluffs. We're only calling the river with the queen high straight in this instance. Our flushes have to raise for value and we're also raising some bluffs as well, obviously. So take a note that just because we don't have much incentive to bluff catch doesn't mean we can't attempt to bluff here ourselves. We might be able to get villain to bet fold a straight without a diamond here, for example. That is worth considering. Next, let's look at our second type of example where villain simply shuts down too often when check two on the river. So for this spot, we are going to look once again at this 10-9-5 two diamonds flop as we did earlier in this video with the same bet size on the flop, this two thirds pot right here. Big blind calls, turn is now going to be a four of spades. The hijack's going to use a geometric sizing here, which is a 1.4x or so over bet. They get called and then the river is a four, which is a complete brick. Doesn't really change much about the board at all. And you can see they're also basically using a pure all in or check strategy. And their value bet region is more or less going to consist of these categories here. Everything king 10 plus approximately, depending on the exact combo of king 10. And then we've also got a lot of bluffs coming in with king high and in particular also a tiny bit of some ace high and a lot of their queen highs, jack highs, and really anything king high or worse is bluffing at a decent frequency here. So that's how they're constructed at equilibrium here. And now let's take a look at the locked version. Villain arrives in this spot with the same range, so we're not changing anything prior to the river. But what we've done is we've kept this value bet range the same. We've kept it at the same frequency approximately with all that king 10 plus going for value here. And then we've had them only bluffing with no made hand. So that means their ace high and king high is checking back. It means that all this ace high stuff and king high stuff that was mixing bluffs before is now checking back. And instead, they're just purely bluffing when they get there with queen high or worse. So queen jack, queen eight, queen seven, etc. All that sort of thing. And if we look at the response from this version of the strategy, take a look at how much calling we're doing. We are... Calling with top pair still at some rate, and we're calling with all of our over pairs plus, but we're no longer doing any real bluff catching at all. We're actually pretty much mixing with the hand that corresponds with the bottom of villain's value bet range. So villain is value betting king 10 sometimes, so our king 10 is also going to mix, but everything worse than that is now folding. Some of these hands like 10-3, 10 deuce that were calling because they were unblocking every single bluff, those are now pure folding and so on and so forth. So we have no incentive to do any hero calling here. We're only calling with stuff that actually beats the villain's value bet range. So in this spot, villain is arriving out the river with a fairly well-rounded range because we haven't locked their strategy on any earlier street. However, instead of bluffing some of their king high and ace high hands with the right blocking properties while giving up some of their queen high and jack high, they're actually giving up with all their king highs and ace highs and always jamming the river whenever they have queen high or worse. They're also continuing to value bet with their king 10 and better, which is important since it signifies that they're not slowing down with their value. They're actually value betting very slightly thinner than they're supposed to since king 10 is checking behind at some rate at equilibrium. In this case, Villain is betting River with around 87 combos of hands, while only 23 of those combos are bluffs, a frequency of around 26%. Since we're getting 1.73 to 1 pot odds against this overbet, we need about 37% equity in order to bluff catch, and we're around 11% short of that mark. For this reason, only Ace-10 and better is calling this River Jam in pure. Since Ace-10 beats King-10, it wins much more than 26% of the time, and as a general rule of thumb, if you beat some of your opponent's value bets, your hand is almost always strong enough to call the river. King 10 in this case only chops with the bottom of our opponent's value range, so it's going to be pretty close to break even, if not losing in some instances. So those are the two types of spots in which you might be able to find some good opportunities to make some hero folds. But if you are going to make these folds, be careful not to let your opponents know that you're doing it. These plays are highly exploitable by stronger players, so you don't want to show your hand and let your opponents know you're making a big fold. That's it for this video. I'll be back soon with more content here on YouTube. In the meantime, feel free to reach out on Discord if you have questions about this video or any of my other content. And until next time, good luck everyone, and thanks for watching.